Today we're going to reflect on the meaning of baptism, especially our baptism as it's rooted in Jesus' baptism by John. Our text from the Gospel of Luke connects baptism with the presence and the activity of the Holy Spirit. We'll hear this morning that the divine presence which came on Jesus at his baptism is the same divine presence that comes on Jesus' followers even 21 centuries later. Baptism is a sign that we belong to God. The voice from God at Jesus' baptism declares him to be God's own son. This is the same claim that we encounter in the Isaiah text when the Lord God says, do not fear for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name, you are mine. This calling, this naming at baptism is also our divine commission, our commission to a divine vocation. The baptized ones are named by God's own name and as children of God and siblings in Christ, we as Christ followers are empowered to be signs of God's reconciliation in the world. So hear now the word of God from the prophet Isaiah chapter 43 verses one to seven. But now, says the Lord, God who created you, O Jacob, God who formed you, O Israel, do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name, you are mine. When you pass through the waters, I, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned, and the flame shall not consume you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I give Egypt as your ransom, Ethiopia and Seba, in exchange for you, because you are precious in my sight and honored, and I love you. I give people in return for you, nations in exchange for your life. Do not fear, for I am with you. I will bring your offspring from the east and from the west. I will gather you. I will say to the north, give them up, and to the south, do not withhold. Bring my sons from far away and my daughters from the ends of the earth, everyone who is called by my name, whom I created for my glory, whom I formed and made. And now hear these words from the Gospel of Luke, chapter three, verses 15 to 17 and 21 to 22. As the people were filled with expectation and all were questioning in their hearts concerning John, whether he might be the Messiah, John answered all of them by saying, I baptize you with water, but one who is more powerful than I is coming. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his granary, but the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. Now, when all the people were baptized, and when Jesus also had been baptized and was praying, the heavens opened, and the Holy Spirit descended upon him in bodily form, like a dove. And a voice came from heaven. You are my son, the beloved. With you I am well pleased. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Time stopped. 
it stood still the moment the classroom door opened in February 1968. And the secretary for the principal's office whispered my name to the teacher and said it, I needed to go with her. I could barely hear her words over my heartbeat pounding in my ears. I was terrified. This was not the normal, you've been called to the principal's office because you mis misbehaved summons. I know that's hard for y'all to believe. <laughs> No, this was quite different. Our school was an American Episcopal boarding school in the mountains of the Philippines. At the time, my family and I lived in Vietnam, in Saigon, what was then the capital of South Vietnam. And I was in boarding school in the Philippines, 2,000 miles away. The North Vietnamese and the Viet Cong had launched the Tet Offensive of 1968. It was one of the largest military campaigns of the Vietnam War. Launched again the forces of South Vietnam, the United States, and their allies. You see, from the day the Tet Offensive began until the day that classroom door opened, six weeks later, I had not heard a word from or about my parents. There was no telephone, no telegram communication available from Vietnam for weeks, months. The matters of war had cut off the postal system entirely. I had been living by the adage, no news is good news, for every day and every night of those six long weeks. But now, I had been called to the principal's office. There was a phone call for me from the United States, not from Vietnam but from the United States. Who might that be? And what is that news? My 17-year-old mind was racing with fear. I had tried for so long to be so strong and think positively, but the strength simply drained away. And I knew that I was at the mercy of that phone call. That call would determine the rest of my life. Fear soared through my veins with every pulse, with every heartbeat as I made my way step by step to the building that housed the principal's office. We got to the office and the principal's assistant handed me the phone. I said, hello? My sister's voice gushed through on the other end of the call like old faithful bursting forth from the earth. And she said, Mary, mom and daddy are all right. They are alive and safe and you don't need to worry. I will remember those words for the rest of my life. What they said and the way they were delivered. You see, I heard my name being called. I heard the assurance that I had life of safety and I heard the encouragement not to worry. Though I remember very little about the rest of the phone call, I do remember in that moment, I knew I had a future, a purpose, a future void of fear, the fear that I had tasted so palpably in those last six weeks, and a future brimming with the possibility of being reunited or reconciled, if you will, with my parents in a few months.
In our text this morning from the prophet Isaiah, we hear the Lord God speaking in the first person. Isaiah reminds the people, it is the one who created you, the one who formed you, who is speaking this promise. Do not fear, says the Lord your God, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine, and I will be with you. At the end of our reading, this same divine voice reminds us that we are gathered from north and south, from east and west. We are called by God's own name. The Lord God says, I will say to the north, give them up, and to the south, do not withhold. Bring my sons from far away and my daughters from the ends of the earth. Everyone who is called by my name, whom I created for my glory, whom I formed and made. You and I are called by God's name. God, our creator, the one whose breath gave us life, the one who simply cannot and will not forget us, calls us by name. You see, God is both possessive. I have called you by name. You are mine. And protective. Do not fear. I will be with you. Now, these words may be hard to hear or even believe when we're moving into our third year of the coronavirus pandemic, but Isaiah meets every question we might have with the assurance of God's presence and God's protection, no matter what. Fire or flood, wind or distress, war or famine, disease or pandemic, God is with us. We carry God's name. It's the very identity we are given in our baptism. And in our gospel lesson today, Luke tells us when Jesus was baptized by John, he first entered into a time of prayer. And while praying, a presence lit on him like a dove and a voice announced that Jesus Jesus had found favor with God. This baptism of Jesus is the occasion of his being set apart by the Holy Spirit. Jesus was given a unique name, the beloved Son of God, God's own nature, God's own name. And with this name came a humble human mission, a vocation, a direction, for the very rest of his life. And a message arrived with this new mission and this new name. And the message pronounced on Jesus at his baptism and through him onto you and to me in our own baptisms is simply, with you I am well pleased. What holy and gracious, freeing words. With you, I am well pleased. Beloved of God, our baptism is our ordination to Christian ministry. It's an ordination that takes part in the mission of God, the mission of God which is committed to the whole church. As theologian Karl Barth has put it, all those baptized as Christians are by that very fact, consecrated, ordained, and dedicated to the ministry of the church. In a few minutes, we will install officers, ruling elders, whom you recently elected to the session of the Mills River Presbyterian Church. And we're reminded by our book of order that the church's ministry is a gift Our ministry is a gift from Jesus Christ to the whole church, the church universal. Christ alone rules, calls, teaches, and uses the church of Christ as he wills, exercising his authority by the ministry of women and men for the establishment and the extension of God's new creation, 
That's what we're about. And Christ's ministry is the foundation and standard for all ministry. It's the pattern of the one who came not to be served, but to serve. And the call to ordered ministry, that is ruling elder, minister of the word and sacrament, or deacon, the call to ordered ministry in the church is an act of the triune God. The Father, Son, and Holy Spirit who call you by name. This morning, normally I would do this for you, but because of COVID restrictions, I'm gonna invite you this morning when you come out this way to leave the sanctuary, I invite you to walk by the baptismal font, reach in, dip your finger in the water, and make the sign of the cross on your forehead as you thank God for the blessing this family of faith has been for you through your journey here. Let the water help you remember you, each one of you, is called by name, by God's own name, created for God's glory and created for Christ's humble human ministry. So hear again these words of the Lord God who says to you, do not fear for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. I will be with you and with you, I am well pleased. So I invite you to touch the water. Know that in touching the water, your life has honor and purpose and meaning and value, and that you are indeed called by God's holy name into God's holy, humble, human ministry. To God be all honor, praise, and glory. Amen.